Good morning, everybody. Um, nice to meet you and see some of you last night. Uh, my name is Trent Fuenmayor. Um, I am at Coinbase Giving, been at Coinbase about two years, so I've seen a lot of ups and downs. I'm sure I can talk to you guys about over drinks. Um, so Coinbase Giving started last year with the DPO, um, and our board pledged 1% of profits, 1% of equity, and 1% of employee time to charitable giving and, and uh, impact philanthropy. So there's a lot of other stuff we do, and I'll give you kind of a brief overview of the rest of our portfolio. But kind of as it relates to this, one of our big funding priority areas is infrastructure or digital public goods. Basically all that great stuff that you all do to sort of keep the crypto ecosystem up and running. Um, we started in 2020 to support two BTC core devs, and that was uh, at Brian Armstrong's insistence. Um, and the, the idea there sort of being that you know, there's so much public infrastructure work that is done, especially with Bitcoin, where there is no central foundation, you know, that Coinbase wanted to sort of pay its share to support that um, public work. In 2021, we expanded to uh, six overall grantees, three of which were Bitcoin, three were other chains. We largely focus on BTC and ETH, but we will do some other stuff as well. But again, just sort of looking at some of these, you know, like I said, public good stuff. Uh, and then we did seven additional grantees in 2022. So overall, we've done about 14, um, and we have budget for up to 50 a year. Um, so we're looking for about 12 a quarter. And honestly, the, the struggle typically is finding good devs, more so than applicants. We get a lot of applicants, and uh, not all of them clear the bar of our crypto team. Um, so if you are interested in having some support, that's kind of what the, the talk today about is. Before we dive into uh, you know, what some of the work that we've supported, like I said, just wanted to give an overview overall to know that this sort of sits in stuff that isn't just this infrastructure work. Um, so we do global development, anything that is a crypto forward solution that addresses a UN sustainable development goal. Um, this is actually one of the ones I'm most excited about. So again, like if you're interested about some cool projects, come talk to me. Um, one of the ones that I'm most excited about here, we're doing Bitcoin backed mortgages in El Salvador. Uh, we're doing support to domestic violence survivors because the number one reason they don't leave their abusers is because they have joint control of their bank or credit card info. So we can do crypto grants to support them. Lots of really cool stuff kind of happening up here. This second pillar, the infrastructure dev grants, that's the one um, that's probably most relevant to y'all, the one that I'm here talking about today. As you can see, it's largely um, open source projects that make the crypto economy safer and easier to use for all. Um, lot, mostly this is our individual developer grantees, but there are a couple other organizations we've supported, um, like Gitcoin, Toucan, and we uh, support some PhD students at Stanford as well. Then the last two are sort of education access and Web3 talent development. Education access, just thinking about people who are on the fringe of financial inclusion and getting them involved. Um, I read a, Informally, I read a report that said 70% of crypto was owned by straight white dudes. I would like to change that number. <laughs> That's sort of what we're trying to get at here. Um, and the Web3 talent development, um, just thinking about how to get largely you know, coders who have been doing work in kind of Web2 to Web3. So a lot of boot camps is kind of what we're funding here. So um, this is a quote from Manish, who is our EVP of engineering. Um, again, just kind of talking about uh, what we're aiming to do here. Um, I think the big thing here is making it simpler and easier to use for everyone. Something that Brian says that I really like a lot is, um, you know, nobody knows, well, not nobody, but very few people know how electricity works. But when you flip on a light switch, you just trust that the light comes on. And I think we have to get crypto to that stage for a lot of people. And I think a lot of the work that's being done in this room and with other core devs around the world is kind of getting us there. Um, Gitcoin is a big uh, partner as well. They help us more in some of the Ethereum ecosystem stuff. Um, but thinking, I like this analogy of thinking about Web3 as a city. Uh, the open source software is the infrastructure, you know, the roads, bridges, and electrical grids it relies on. And so, you know, we know there's a lot of people out there doing great work to, to keep things up and running. So that's what we're looking to fund. So I wanted to give a sample of two types of grantees. Um, yesterday at the Spiral Talk, um, you know, I think he hit it, hit it well, too, about what we're looking for. So we fund individuals, we fund groups, we fund companies, we fund all sorts of things. So we're pretty agnostic towards structure. You know, we'll work with you as long as you're paying your taxes uh, to figure out, you know, what's the best sort of, uh, you know, route to get it to you. Um, but we are looking primarily for things that are kind of non-monetizable. So we're not looking to fund your ICO or, you know, your startup. We're looking for stuff that's sort of public ecosystem for everybody. 
Um, so Josie is a Bitcoin core dev who is in um, Amsterdam. Uh, we were hoping to try to get him out here for this, but it was just too long of a flight. Um, but he does a lot of core dev work working on transaction privacy. He's an American citizen living in the Netherlands. He's paid in BTC. I think that's just an example of like, you know, the different kinds of structures that we're happy to work with. So, you know, we'll pay in BTC, USDC, bank wire, or whatever. Just, you know, come work with us. Uh, another great one is WeFuzz. Um, they're a security audit and bug bounty solution. They're a company. They're not just an individual uh, developer. So again, we'll work with um, different structures. They're an LLC. And the grant is to fund the entire org's work. There's actually another um, new grantee in our most recent round. It hasn't been announced yet here at the conference today, Laren Cohen at uh, 13X. So we just funded them. Um, and he came up to me last night. I was like, oh, hey, good to meet you. So it was the first time meeting in person, which was great. Um, and yeah, that's basically the end. I figured this would be a slightly shorter talk. Um, this is all of the information. I've got flyers that have this QR code on as well, so you can grab them from me. Um, if you're interested in applying, scan this, follow that link, Google Crypto Community Fund, come talk to me after. Um, and then a sort of uh, it starter question, if you don't want to talk to me about developer grants. Um, my VP in charge of sort of this ecosystem funding came to me recently and was like, how, how can we best use our infrastructure grant funds to support the, the Bitcoin ecosystem? And I talked to him about the developer grants, but he was like, I want you to think bigger. So if you don't want to talk about developer grants, but you'd still open to talk to me, come answer that question for me. Tell me what you think Coinbase can do with our philanthropic dollars to help the Bitcoin ecosystem beyond just developer grants. So would love to talk to any of y'all on any of the topics that I shared on. Cool. I guess should. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say questions. I don't know. I can do that now too. You could always buy more Bitcoin. With that money. Yeah. So the answer to this, and this is actually one of the ones that the PR team prepped me on, uh, just because our stock our stock price is so dependent on the price of Bitcoin already, they didn't want further exposure on our balance sheet. That was kind of the reasoning there. Yeah. I mean, I agree, but <laughs> that's that's the official answer. So uh, for the developer grants, uh, so can you speak a little bit more on what you're looking for? You mentioned that you're looking for, I guess, what is open source contribution to the ecosystem rather than funding your ICO or whatever startup. Mm -hmm. Can you, do you have like some examples of like tooling that uh, other developers have built that you've sponsored or things like that? You, you might have gone over this last night. But yeah, there is a link to, um, so every time that we do a batch of grantees, we, we do sort of a brief blurb on all of them. And then as part of the program, you get to publish on the Coinbase blog as well. So like this is screenshots from the Coinbase blog where he talks about like all of the work that he's doing. So if you just Google like Coinbase developer grants, there'll be blogs that kind of outline everything. Um, security is a big one. Uh, developer experience and productivity and tooling is a big one. Um, the sort of bug bounty, security audit stuff, we've, we've done a lot of funding there. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just anything that is either A, for developers, like that developer productivity thing, or just like the security aspects, anonymity, um, thinking about how improvements in the ecosystem will benefit all customers. So we're, we're not looking to like, we have another team that's, you know, Coinbase developer relations. So we're not asking you to like develop on our dApps or develop on our system. It's sort of specifically for people who are cross chain or benefiting the whole ecosystem, you know, not just one individual company or, or startup. What about education? Yeah. So that's not specifically in the developer grants, but we do have like other grants besides the ones that I'm sharing about today. So I am happy to talk to you about that too. Um, for a lot of what we do in the education, like we've done some really big ones with code.org and LinkedIn Learning, but we also do smaller ones with like DAOs. So Ed3DAO is a uh, DAO of teachers that are looking to do like crypto education in the classroom. Crypto Kids Camp is in South Central LA doing um, STEM camps for high schoolers. Um, we've done the, that project in Afghanistan that's teaching girls how to code solidity. So a lot of different types of projects there too. Would you all be open to like Bitcoin education, like in the yeah. community? Yeah, we do. Um, well, Kala is more here, Web3 Talent Development. That's in Africa doing um, funding with uh, Bitcoin developers there. Uh, we're working with My First Bitcoin in El Salvador. We've done a couple of Bitcoin education grants, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about that one. Uh, so actually, I have two questions. Um, so the first one, I guess, will be, uh, do you, are you guys interested in doing donations to charities that are Bitcoin? 
And I guess the one I'll bring up is OpenSAT. Um, I haven't actually heard of OpenSAT, so I'd love to hear more. Uh, the short answer is yes. So we do have a product team as well that's working on building like donation services like within the Coinbase ecosystem. Um, so we are definitely interested in that. Um, but we, it's, it's, there's also people like The Giving Block, which I think is kind of like leading in the space here too. So sometimes we like partner with them on just actually facilitating the donations. But the short answer is like, yes, would love to hear more and certainly open to it. Okay, and then the second question is, is that, uh, let's say you do uh, sponsor somebody with a donation. Do you also, are you also interested in, uh, I guess, like collaborating with them in terms of uh, using your PR team to sort of elevate their social profile, I guess like uh, do a blog post or something about them on your website and just sort of, sort of get their name out there? Are you guys interested in doing that as well? Yeah, um, we do. So the again, the um, each of the developers gets to post a blog on our blog twice a year. So these are screenshots from our blog where they have like shared about their thing. We tweet about them every time that we do a new announcement. Um, I can work with our socials team if you have a particular like you know tweet that you want to get out there and, and reboost it or something like that. Um, we also ostensibly have one percent of employee time as well. So like sometimes I'm trying to get like PR review from some of our engineers or stuff like that. To be honest, that's been a little bit touch and go sometimes because. You know, our engineers are super busy on other things too. So I've been able to get some review from them, but it kind of depends just because that team's usually pretty strapped. So yes, but it kind of depends like on, on what you're looking for. Um, so for a lot of the like Bitcoin focused ones, there's uh, kind of like no strings attached. And also like, hey, if you don't like us personally, like just you, you can say whatever you want or you order like for Blockstream, like when they made the partnership with right. them, there were a bunch of the Blockstream developers were like, this is garbage, like all that sort of stuff. Like for the funding and all that kind of stuff, or like, are there any strings attached on that one, or is it like, hey, the developer, this is like theirs and all that kind of stuff? Maybe they don't get renewed like next year, but like, it's not like, hey, we're gonna like pull your funding if like you say something that like we disagree with. Yeah, I mean, we've we've never encountered that situation, so I don't anticipate that it would happen. Like, if you went on Twitter and started blasting Coinbase, like, I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, we the we do have a grant agreement, and basically the uh, agreement says like you owe two reports over the course of the year to sort of show you know what you're working on kind of thing I, I don't know that there's anything in there about like you know don't blast i don't know yeah but we we do the payments monthly um so you can kind of think of it like a salary i my personal philosophy is like we're here supporting the ecosystem i don't know if i can you know use the word no strings attached but the as close as we can get to that right like i think we're looking I think about it this way. If you're a developer working in the crypto ecosystem, there's four touch points with Coinbase. You can come work for us. Maybe not lately. Um, you can go work for our uh, DevRel team and do some uh, development on our dApps. You can do this, the developer grants, or you can walk right past us and do your own thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm totally fine with any of those four touch points, like whatever makes the most sense for you. So um, I would say like in ethos, yes, but like I don't know what the edge cases look like in terms of how, you know what our PR team's going to get mad about. But there is a PR team. Yeah, oh, okay. definitely. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, uh, just a question about developer ecosystems. I think a lot of the projects you guys work with like generate a lot of excitement, especially newer developers like, getting into the developer ecosystems. Um, do you think there's anything that like Bitcoin can learn from these other projects and how they're kind of bootstrapping their developer ecosystem and especially getting new people in? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so one of the things I think about, because um, kind of the two biggest funding ecosystems we work with are BTC and ETH, and because you've got you know the Ethereum Foundation, you've got Vitalik, you've got all these people who are like coming together saying, hey, these are the pain points. We're going to put together like a developer kit test node so you can go work on on this, or we're going to start this foundation to like help new developers getting in the space and train them. Like Bitcoin doesn't really have that, right? Like you have these meetups, you have people like Brink, you have you know these conferences all around the world, but it you know it's pretty flat and y'all just get in a room and sort of talk about what the problems are. So I think a little, you know, it's the age old question between centralization and decentralization, but there's a little bit of like, if there was a centralized body, foundation, whatever, that sort of, you know, could agree up upon these are the top five issues facing developers and this is what we're going to do about it. I think that's probably where my answer would go. Um, in terms of like, customer acquisition, which I think is something Coinbase is pretty good at. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people who are intimidated, you know, and I think sometimes the, the BTC developers I've met, you know, get so into Schnorr signatures that they don't realize like that the common person who, you know, 
w might want to get into this doesn't understand that. So I think there's a little bit of translation. I, I know Spiral is doing a ton of really good work here. We've worked with, um, what's the organization? I forgot, Exumia, I think, who's doing translation of the Bitcoin white paper. You know what I mean? There's, there's other places, I think, where there's kind of like touch points for the common person that I think probably the Bitcoin ecosystem could learn from some other places. So those would probably be the two, I'd say. Cool. Well, yeah, come talk to me after. I'd love, love to meet y'all. Thanks.